So as someone who has watched Sentai, Tokusatsu, um, and Power Rangers for years, I've always had to suspend my disbelief. But watching this episode, I decided to review it as if I didn't have to. This is fun. Hi guys, my name is Maria Park and this is Approach to Nerd. And in this episode, we are reviewing Power Rangers Dino Fury episode four entitled New Recruits. And we're going to get to the nitty gritty of this episode because I'm going to review this as if it was not made for children, which technically sometimes it's not. And as if somebody with common sense who did not have to suspend their disbelief was watching this and nitpicking, you know, kind of like I do all my other reviews. So let's go, let's go. So I have questions in this review. So we do know that there is a brand new general and that general's name is Boom Tower. Now the naming system in this series is amazing. Um, for some reason, we're told to ignore the other new character, uh, Dragnarok or Dragnarok. He kept saying his name. Um, no one calls him his name. So I guess he's not important right now, but there is an orb. It's called the Nef, uh, Nephrite or Neftire orb. It's sitting in a museum and apparently the villains know it's in the museum. They could have all just overrun the museum and taken the orb or maybe found a way of teleporting it to them. Cause you know, there's teleportation in this series with the Rangers at least. Um, so I don't know why this was not a more smooth and intricate plan, but you know, for plot purposes, we needed to have Boom Tower go and get this orb that when he attaches it to himself will make him unstoppable. So that's how I knew that's exactly where the green and black uh, dino keys were. So at the same time, for some reason, Zato, our wonderful alien night ranger, needs a job. I don't know why, but Amelia has talked him into applying at her company, you know, the make-believe BuzzFeed, as a reporter. And she's giving him reasons why he's qualified for this job, even though, you know, he's 67 million years old and has no qualifications that would even be applicable to being a reporter. And not to mention, he doesn't need a job. He lives in a spaceship underneath the ground where he gets his food and lodging for free. And he has no actual earth ID or social security number. So I'm not sure how he was going to go about, you know, getting this job with HR and payroll, but you know, whatever. I mean, you got to pay taxes. So I'm very confused on how he was going to, you know, get around that. And not to mention, if you watch this episode very closely, you'll see that Jane never really says his name at all. She says Javier, but never says his name. So I don't know what's going on with this. I don't know why they're trying to make this man get a job. And quite frankly, if I'm going to say quite frankly enough in this, because I will, um, why, <laughs> why does the Red Ranger of the team need to be another ranger who's distracted away from being a ranger. If he gets a job as a reporter, then he has to make an excuse at the same time as Amelia to always not go to work. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not understanding the logic behind this choice, but that is me not suspending my disbelief. Suspending my disbelief. So Zato is applying to be a, a reporter at Bud's Blast. So move it on. They meet another candidate named Javier, who was applying for the reporter position as well, because he wants to buy a keytar. Now in this scene, it doesn't make sense that there's kind of like, so there's like not, it's like tension between Ollie, Amelia and Zaytar because you know, they ask him, are you here for the reporter job too? And when he says yes, then they're like no longer interested in having a conversation with this guy because he was playing the harmonica and they were like, oh, cool harmonica, nice. And he's like, then they start questioning him on why he's there. And of course he tells them why he's there. And then it was like, okay, we're done talking to you, even though he's still talking to them. And he's like, well, anyway, you know, these guitars are expensive. And I'm like, yeah, they were kind of being a little bit jerky to him in the beginning because I guess they wanted, you know, Zato to get this job as a reporter because it was very important. I mean, I don't understand that. Like he's not Clark Kent. He's not keeping his ear to the ground to find the Sporak beast. I'm, I'm very confused. So whatever, but long story short, um, 
Javier gets the Neftri orb or Nef we're going to call it orb. He gets the orb story at the museum. And then Dato, for plot purposes, gets to go interview a girl named Izzy Garcia at her high school because she's a very up and coming um, athlete that I guess is the best in the school or district or something like that. Turns out Izzy happens to be Javier's um, stepsister, which is interesting because they really in this episode act a lot more like twins than they do step siblings. They actually are a lot closer than some of the siblings we've seen in Power Rangers. So, but you know, it can happen. So I'll suspend it though. I do think that this is a really good, it would have been a good opportunity to make them like fraternal twins or something like that. But yeah, it is what it is. Um. So while Javier is at the museum, of course, they come to take the orb. And, you know, long story short, he calls the Power Ranger hotline, which is always so amazing to me. And they show up once again in civilian form, <laughs> like not morphed in civilian form. And he comes down the stairs right as they're getting ready to fight. And I'm like, if he had just been 10 seconds earlier, he would have seen who they were because they're not trying to hide their identity that they're told they're not allowed to tell people. So it's very confusing for me. Um, but yeah, they fight and, you know, Boom Tower kind of is getting the upper hand and his dad, the warden, because the warden Garcia happens to be is in Javier's father. He gets injured because he basically tells Boom Tower right before the Rangers show up, you know, you can't be here. That belongs, that's a property of the museum. He takes his job seriously, um, even with, you know, monsters involved. <laughs> so he gets blasted and I got to give him props because he gets hurt. He sees his son get the orb and take off in his, you know, vehicle. Um, they take him back to be treated because the first thing they said was we need to go, go, go find Javier before, you know, you know, Boomtown and, and everyone does. And then they're like, <laughs> but then they look at the warden, they're like, we'll all three take you back to get treated. And I'm like, why are all three of you have to go? Why can't two of you go find Javier? That just seemed like the logical approach, but I guess safety in numbers. And so the warden is getting treated. And then this is why I have mad props for uh, him he goes from, you know, um, I don't know where my son is. You know, he's always disappearing. Um, so to, I got to get back to work. <laughs> you know, it's just like, he's like, yeah, my son's missing. He took the orb. Um, I'm not sure if all of them saw um, the actual events of him getting in the, the truck or the Jeep. I think it was a Jeep. I don't know if all of them literally saw what happened. Like he took the orb, he got into the car. Um, and of course he's being followed because they want to make sure the villains are following him because they want to make sure that they know where he's going. Um, and I think I always forget what they renamed. Um, what is her name? I think it's mucus. We're just going to go with that. I'm tired, but anyway, so she's following, I don't think it's mucus. It might be mucus. I'm going to look that up, but basically she's following or telling Javier to, to report back where he is or where he's taking this orb. And he just happens to be taking the orb to his favorite spot in the woods where he practices music because his dad disapproves is what I'm, is what they're saying. So, um, it is mucus. I was really hoping I was wrong. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, mucus is telling him and then she finds out the location and then she goes back and she tells, you know, um, boom tower where he is. And then they're trying to go to get the orb from him. So he's in the woods. And of course, Izzy, who they learned, the Rangers learned while they're talking to the warden right before he says he's going back to work. Um, he seems very okay with Javier being missing. I'm just putting it out there because he saw his son take off in the Jeep with the orb. He saw, well, I don't know if they saw mucus attach, you know, get attached to the back of the Jeep. I don't know how they didn't see that, but whatever. But, you know, his son's missing. He took the orb. He went back and got bandaged on his head. And he seems completely okay with the fact that his son is missing with this orb that these monsters are after because he's just going back to work. And right before he went back to work, he was talking, he asked Izzy how her training was going. And I'm like, this guy is hardcore. He does not care. <laughs> like, just doesn't care. But Izzy's like, I'll take you to my brother's favorite spot because my dad does, you know, disapproves of his music. So I know where it is. And I'm like, yeah, this is how they're going to become Rangers. So they go to the woods. Um, and of course, Javier is, you know, ba basically being attacked. But, you know, of course, his sister and the Rangers show up. Um, and, you know, long story short, 
Izzy and Javier get the orb back because, you know, at one point, Boom Tower and, and them have it and the Rangers knock it out of their hand. And Javier just decides to break it. I don't know what possessed him to break this orb, especially since it was, you know, museum property and he didn't know what was inside, but he decided to smash it. And then, of course, there's the green and black dino keys. And then they transform. And what I liked about them transforming is Izzy has a green skirt on because of course, you know, in Rural Soldier, the Green Ranger is a guy. But in this version, they made the Green Ranger a female, but of course they're going to keep the Sentai stock fighting footage from New Zealand and, <laughs> and parts of Japan and incorporate it into this series. So they have to have it kind of canon. At first I got excited when I saw the skirt. I'm like, wow, does this mean we're getting all original fight scenes? And then they didn't do it. I was like, crap. But I will say this, this is my next um, moment of hard to suspend my disbelief. So I am down with Izzy because I don't know her. I am down with her saying, I don't do skirts and rip the skirt off. And then ha that's why we have green not wearing a skirt. But shouldn't Amelia have done that too? I have never seen Amelia wear a skirt or a dress so far in this season. She seems kind of tomboyish as well. She wears that really interesting pink jacket. And I say that interesting to, to be polite because I don't like it. But her outfit bothers me in this series a lot. Um, she does not seem the, the dress and skirt type, at least in the series. I don't know about the actress, obviously, but in the series, she, Amelia should have been like, you're right. I don't have to wear this skirt either and then rip it off, but she can't because Asuna, who is Rural Soldier Pink, has a skirt in her fight scenes. So yeah, I'm suspending my disbelief that Amelia was not on board with the taking off the skirt because I kind of think if she had that option, she would have tossed it to him. But that's just me. Um, now Izzy does very well as a ranger. Her and her brother, like she's an athlete. Her brother's a musician, but they have really good fighting skills. I'm not really sure why. Um, it's established in the pilot episode that both Amelia and um, Ollie had some type of, of fight training. I think he was good with fencing or sorting or swords or whatever, and she took, you know, martial arts. Uh, so they kind of covered that. But Izzy and Javier just came in swinging and came in swinging very effectively. And I will say I like the banter with Izzy like how she was telling um, Hightower that they were vibing, you know, that was fun. So I like, all of that is fun. Like the whole fight scene was fun. Um, I wish they had kept to their rules of learning the choreography, like with the morph. And what I mean by that is, you know, they summon the Zords. Of course they know their Zords because they watch TV and they know other Power Rangers have Zords. So of course they know their Zords. Um, but they go into, you know, the Dino Fury, you know, me or Megazord and they all know, the choreography and the attacks and even the name of the Megazord. And, and that's like such a missed opportunity for me because I really, really like the fact in the, well, episode two, when they were training um, that, you know, Amelia and Ollie were having so much trouble morphing and they seemed to have taken that away. So, you know, the, these two are just, I guess, prodigies in the choreography. <laughs> so I guess the real, the real test will be when we see them in their full, you know, I call it Time Rangers um, Tron morph. I do like the morph. Um, if they know the choreography automatically or do they have to go through this little boot camp process like Ollie and Amelia? Um, but yeah, I think that's just my little nitpick slash suspending disbelief. They kind of, they kind of acclimated very quickly. Um, Izzy also is very mature for a high schooler. So I'm just putting that out there. Not in looks, she just acts a lot. She acts more mature than Amelia does. So Izzy is a very, like, I don't know. It's just interesting, the dynamic of that. Um, but yeah, I like Izzy's character. I think she's cool. Javier seems cool. Everybody seems to get along like immediately, which honestly how they treated Javier during the reporter interview kind of sucked. Um, but at least he got, he gets the job at the end. It's really funny how Jane gives him the job and says, you know, you took the orb and guard it with your life, blah, blah, blah. I want to hire you. And she goes to Zayto and she's like, yeah, <laughs> try later Chihuahua or something like that. It's like, okay. So the whole thing with Jane is interesting because Jane is, even though she's the boss, she seems like very unintelligent, <laughs> but I think because she is the comedy relief, just like, um, what is it? 
what is the name of her 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 um thing j i think it's j borg um she reminds me of betty from beast morphers and of course of of skull and i like the scene with the teleprompter for instance jane was in her ear but she was drinking and she spilled something on her keyboard. And so all of the, the, the message in the teleprompter that she had Jay Borg reading live got all jumbled up. And I'm like, why don't you just tell her, feed her the lines in her ear because you're talking to her and she is you know, a robot and is very capable of repeating what she hears, computer brain. But Jane, nope, <laughs> no, cause you know. But suspending my disbelief, it's just funny. They're comedy relief. Um, but yeah, I, I really did enjoy this episode. I did. Um, there are other quirks that I think are funny in this series. I like that Zato likes to throw people under the bus. Like Ollie's like, don't tell Amelia. I, I basically taught you that cheesy line to say every everybody. And then when he does it again, everyone looks at him. He's like, my friend Ollie taught me that. So he threw her <laughs> completely threw Ollie under the bus. And I love that Amelia has no problem lying. She's the first pink ranger that I've seen that, you know, they all tell little fibs like to get out of you know people knowing there are power rangers, but she fibs about a lot of stuff. So like, like even in this episode, um, she, you know, when Izzy was talking about her dad being the warden, um, <laughs> and Amelia like describes him and then Izzy's like, oh, have you met him? And she's like, nope, never. And like, she's just really quick to just deny stuff and then lie. So it's really refreshing to see Power Rangers have no problem with that. Overall, because it is meant to be campy and it is meant to be a kid's show, um, pretty good episode. I'm glad we now have the green and black Rangers. Um, if I had to nitpick anything, like actually nitpick, I would say that we already knew who the green and black Rangers were because they had them automatically in the opening. And we also saw their Zords. So there's, they're not trying to hide anything. We know, I know that they realize, we know that there is a green and black ranger. We know that they're, they've already been cast because we've been following the news. So it's like Hasbro just said, well, they already know who they are. So like, why waste money? <laughs> or why play the old opening? Let's just, just break out the new one. So they get credits. So I think probably, you know, playing the, you know, the first opening with just the three rangers and then leave it as a prize and then start them off next week would have been great. That's if we get, you know, how Netflix is. We may not have episode five next week. It could be two weeks from now, but whenever episode five comes out, then that would have been the one I would have had the opening in, but it is what it is. Um, if I had my way, they would change the opening music altogether. It just, it's horrible. I hate it, but I love the music for the morph. So it's very strange. And I love the morph. This is probably one of the best morphs. And I said this in my other um, reviews, the best morph I have seen in Power Ranger series to date. So cool with that. Um, just have a few little questions here or there, you know, suspending my disbelief, which I've already said. Um, and overall, I enjoyed the episode. But what did you think? Please leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you would like to sign up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next on their bell, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.